Hi, I'm Armando Fox. And I'm Dave Patterson. We wanted to welcome you to this offering of CS 169.1x on edX, Engineering Software as a Service. And as you might know from the name of the course, this is really about software engineering and using software as a service as a way to teach you these important principles. We chose software as a service not only because it's a good fit for Agile, which we focus on in this class, but also we think software as a service is going to become one of the dominant ways, if not the most dominant way, that important software is delivered in the future. This course is based on a course that Dave and I have been teaching successfully at UC Berkeley. The Berkeley course is very popular here, and you're going to be receiving the same materials, homework assignments, uh, and basically be held to the same level of expectation as we hold the Berkeley students. So it's a rigorous course, it's challenging, but we think you're going to have a lot of fun and learn a tremendous amount. And it's really practical. If you've been reading the newspaper at least in the United States in the last six months. On the front page is a software engineering disaster, which is the Obamacare website. And what we came to appreciate while teaching the course and reading the newspapers, that if only the Obama administration had taken our course, they could have avoided the disaster that it was. And uh, the agile techniques that we talk about, the importance of service-oriented architecture is uh, apparent in the newspapers and in this course. And increasingly, leaving the Obamacare aside, these software engineering skills are important for just about everybody. Uh, I, I'll quote a website in the United States that looks for jobs, and software engineer is the most attractive job of the 200 jobs they enter. So it's increasingly something that everybody needs to know about, and this course is a pretty good way to learn it. Along with the course, Dave and I wrote a textbook that was specifically designed to accompany these course materials. Uh, it's not mandatory for the course, but it's recommended. Uh, we've gotten good feedback about it. You'll see that it has very high reviews on Amazon.com. We tried to make it very inexpensive. Uh, there's both a print version and an ebook version available, and you don't need to have a Kindle to read the Kindle version. Plus, the Kindle version comes with free updates. So as we continue to improve and add new content to the book, if you have the Kindle version, you'll get that content for free. So we encourage you to check it out, and we hope you like it. Uh, there's also a number of screencasts that accompany the material in the book. Uh, you'll see that those screencasts will also be woven into the videos available in this course. So even if you don't follow all of the book examples, uh, some parts of the book in screencast form are going to be mixed in with the videos. And we've also got a handful of interviews, informal interviews, with prominent software as a service uh, engineers, CTOs, and leaders from companies like Twitter and Salesforce uh, and others that are very prominent in this environment. So we introduce those uh, at points in the course that are relevant to each topic, and we hope you enjoy hearing from people in the field as well about these topics. And a piece of advice, the temptation on your screen will be to be doing something else and trying to have our videos go in the background. Don't do that. <laughs> there have been a lot of studies that have shown <laughs> that you can't really multitask. You think you can, but you can't pay attention. You get less out of it. The human brain is wired to get a little endorphin mix for having every single uh, piece of information, but people lose information. So just concentrate six or ten minutes at a time, answer the questions, and then take a break if you need to Twitter between our outstanding lectures. What? That oh, was, right. Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> lastly, you might find that there's a video segment called How to Succeed in CS169X. We've tried to summarize in that video some of the habits that previous cohorts of students uh, have found successful. We've offered this course several times, and based on student feedback and our own improvements to the course, we've learned quite a bit. Uh, so hopefully you'll take a few minutes to watch that and get some advice about how to succeed. And with that, uh, we want to say a few words about your fearless leader, Professor Sam Joseph. Sam is going to be your course facilitator, and he is an early alumnus and early adopter. Uh, from I think the very first time we offered this course as a MOOC, Sam was involved. And since then, he's been uh, enormously valuable in helping us improve the course in so many ways. Those of you who go on to take part two, which is, uh, consists of more advanced topics, will also have the chance to potentially help out with a future offering of the course as a community TA. And Sam really is the one who gets credit for building all that infrastructure, for introducing things like remote pair programming through uh, the web, and uh, he's going to be a great guide. We're very much enjoying working with him. You can see his picture on the back cover of the book since he's now officially the book's editor. And uh, thank you, Sam, for making the course even better. Thank you to all of you guys for uh, preparing to take it. You're going to have a great time. Good luck. Good luck.